Andy Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Rich and I are out on a road trip again today. We're at the Dollar Tree. We've got lots of great tips for you. I hope you'll stay tuned. I thought we would start in the paper craft paper area, sorry, and the first thing I want to tell you about is wax paper. Wax paper is really great when you're doing dyes and you want the dyes that are intricate to have the paper fall out of them easily. That works really well to layer in there and I'll do a video on that. Plastic wrap is also really great for when you're doing anything with napkins and you want to seal them to a piece of paper. You'll need some kind of plastic wrap. Coffee filters are really great for glitter or using it with yeah. embossing powder. They catch them really easily and then you can put it back in the bottle. And also, it doesn't, the glitter doesn't seem to stick to it like it does other products. These are K-cups. K-cups work really great when you want to stain something or if you want to put some texture in your gesso or your texture paste. It will it'll change the color to a brown, but it'll also give it like a dirt look. You can also use coffee grinds that you pull out of a regular filter, or you can use tea bags. And I was going to show you tea bags to talk about staining, but I can't find those yet. When I do, we'll show them to you. We're in the same section with medical supplies. This paper tape works really good to uh, take anything and adhere it to another piece of paper without it ripping the paper underneath. So instead of like using your washi tape or using your good tapes, you can use that for it. You can also make your own washi tape out of paper tape by stamping on it or coloring it with inks or coloring it with paint, but it does work good for that. A row with beauty supplies where you get nail polish and things like that. And here's where they have the little pump bottles that I had that I bought. Um, I bought mine online, but they have them in this store, and they have them in some of the better stores. I apologize that some of you don't have good stores, but um, if you do have a decent store or you have one in your area, I recommend you making one big trip to those to find these things. If you're looking for a brush that you can use for embossing powder that won't cost you a lot of money, you can get the large eyeshadow brush or the small eyeshadow brush. The small means the bristles on the brush are a little bit smaller. Can you see the difference? I think the smaller one would probably work better and you'd, you'd be able to wipe off those little stray, stray embossing powder flakes you want to get off your paper. Toothbrushes, not the new ones, but an old one, work really well for flicking paint. So if you have bought yourself a new one or you went to the dentist and they gave you a new one, take your old one and use it for flicking paint. The ones that have bristles that are straight across, I don't know if you can see that, like this, work best. And the cheaper the brush, the better because usually they'll have a stiffer, stiffer bristle and stiffer bristles are better for flicking paint. Quick erasers are in the cleaning supply section. These work really well for removing scuffs and taking off stickers. It also will polish your silver if you have any silver. But the reason I like it is because it takes stains off of metal and it takes watercolor paint off of your paint palettes. So if you have a paint palette and you can't get the watercolor paint off of it, there's your answer right there. I really like these 360 dusters. You get three pieces in there, which means you get a handle and two of the, I don't know, you call it duster piece. Anyway, you use that duster piece without the handle or with it to get rid of glitter, to get rid of embossing powder off your surfaces, and it really is handy because it will pick up those kind of things that normally other pieces or other, other products won't pick up. These are great for your dog hair, but they also work good for glitter or getting embossing powder off of those pesky areas. I recommend these too. I love Dollar Tree planners. I've recovered them. They're really nice because they've got this big plastic outer part, and I've also done the smaller ones. They're really handy, and I recommend them. This time of year, they're great for Christmas gifts. And speaking of those planners, I've taken these big paper clips and decorated them to put inside those planners as an accessory and to mark the page. But these are really nice, the, the larger ones. They, they have the smaller ones too, but I like the larger one for that. You've obviously seen these stickers on cards. In fact, I just made a card where I put them on. They have a bunch of different types of stickers here, but I really like these ones that are kind of like an enamel dot. And here's a secret, if you buy the colored ones and you don't like the color, take your alcohol markers and change the color. So if you've got a Sharpie and it's like a darker blue and you want this to be more of a navy, you just color over that and let it sit for a second and let it dry and it'll be perfect. 
Last year at Christmas, I made a card where I put one of these tea lights in it, and at that point, they didn't have these teeny tiny ones, but look, now they have these ones that are so much smaller. I'll put them next to the other ones. Hopefully, you can see the difference size-wise. I think it's really cool that they have the teeny tiny ones now. They're called tea lights, and they have 120 hours, which is the same as the bigger ones, and I'm going to grab some of these before I leave today because I'm afraid they'll be out before Christmas, but look at that. It's cool. It'll be great for uh, Halloween things too. I really like these 5x7 and their 8x10 frames that have uh, a wood look or a metallic look to the outside of them. At Christmas time I take E6000 glue and I glue some type of ornament on the outside. I put a piece of paper on the inside that's like a decorated paper and make it a theme and I'll make sure I link that video here but it really these are really nice for inexpensive great gifts especially for people that are in senior homes where you can attach the, you can attach it and put it on their dresser and it's good to go it's a two dollar gift their gift bags are really great for that. When I was just explaining about the picture frames, you can cut a piece of this out so that it goes inside the frame and then glue an object to the outside. You can also use it as a layer on your cards or you can make it into uh, a decoupage piece where you're using that bigger, I mean it's a big piece of paper that you can use as a background. Especially these larger bags, I mean these are huge, they're probably 18 to 22 inches tall and they work really great when you want a really elegant look and you need something big to do that. You can use tissue paper for a variety of things. I'm using it right now in my art journal. I'm going to stamp on it and uh, decoupage it into the book. It really works great for decoupage. It also works well when you want to have some backing for a project. All you have to do is put some collage podge over it, let it dry, and then it becomes a lot more sturdy surface, and I'll show you what you can do with that when you're done. I've made some really cool albums out of these gift sacks. I really recommend them, especially if they come in a variety of colors. So if you have a color thing that you want to go with, like pink for a little girl, or maybe the school they go to, their colors are red and black, that's how you would do it so that your, your album is color coordinated. When we're talking about those picture frames that have uh, something attached to the front of them, what I would do is I would cut this loop off the top and I would glue this right to the front of it and it would look so cute. You can do the same with crosses and they have a variety of crosses. They have all different colors. So if you need a specific color, you should be able to find something that would match. But I, that's, this is where I go for my inspiration when I'm looking for something to attach to those picture frames. All of their Christmas ornaments are great for that. If you don't really know me, you don't know that I like to try on hats or any kind of accessories when I'm in stores. So these are very frisky and I'm loving them. Last year I took some of this hair, one of their crowns, and a mirror and I attached it to a wreath and made our niece a really cute door decoration and I'll link that video here. You, know, you can't go anywhere without checking out the candy aisle so while I'm doing this I figured I would do that instead. Anytime you can find cute decorator napkins, you can take them apart and put them on the front of a card by just putting that uh, saran wrap behind it and gluing it down. And then I really love ice cube trays. You can make all kinds of really cool decorations with caulk that you get just in the regular hardware store or with uh, texture paste and or even better is hot glue. You can put it in there and make yourself some decorations for on your projects. Paper towels are really great for texture. You see this design? If you want a background that's got a really cool impression, you just roll your roll of paper towels over it and you'll be able to get that impression left behind. It's really interesting and I, I've seen that in a lot of Ranger videos and Diane Reevely does a lot of videos showing how to do that. I've never done this, but last year there was a really big trend where you turned these into a snowman by taking rubber bands and tying it in the middle. You filled it with rice first, not, not rice you've cooked, just dry rice. You fill it and then you put a rubber band around the center and then you fold down the top and I'll link a video. But anyway, that's what they use these socks for. I thought I'd tell you that since I just walked by them. I love these teeny tiny little bottles of Vaseline 
and this is very very small it's maybe an inch high you can put it in with your colored pencils not your watercolor pencils but your colored pencils and you just stick the tip of the lead in there and it blends beautifully don't put the wood in there just the tip of your lead and then uh, you color with it and make sure before you put your pencil back that you really wipe it off well I know I showed you chopping mats on our last video, but one of my viewers said that she uses it with her dyes. She cuts the dye out of her chopping mat and makes it into a mask or like a stencil. I thought it was a genius idea and I wanted to share it with you. So I hope you enjoyed our day at the Dollar Tree, that you got some great ideas from our tips and that you'll give this a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media because you know we love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.